Hi, my name is Stephanie and today I wanted to share some tips for people who are in neurotypical and autistic relationships. Now I would say neurotypical and neurodiverse, but since neurodiverse also means other types of brains, not necessarily just autistic brains. I'm gonna go with autistic here just because that's from my perspective. So I'm sure a lot of these are actually going to be applicable to anyone who's neurodiverse and really anyone in a relationship, but I'm gonna try to come at it from specifically my point of view. I'm not a relationship expert or anything like that, but I have been married to a neurotypical for five years now, so I feel like I do have some authority to talk on the subject and we actually went through the journey of finding out about what was going on with me so basically finding out that I did indeed have autism together through our marriage so we started we were married and he didn't know that I was autistic and I didn't know either and so we've kind of gone through this whole thing and so I thought maybe this would be helpful for those of you who are in those kind of relationships or maybe who want to be and stuff like that. Tip number one is pretty simple, and that is to learn how to communicate. Now, obviously, most people struggle with the aspect of communication, especially in relationships, but I think it's a little bit more uh, difficult <laughs> when you have an NT versus an autistic because it's almost like sometimes you guys are speaking a different language completely. So for me, what really helps is specific and plain speech. A lot of times in relationships, people do the whole like, I implied that this should happen, or I implied that I wanted this, etc. I try to give you some signals. A lot of people on the spectrum are pretty much blind to that kind of stuff, especially when it's in their own kind of situation. You know, some people think, oh, well, you should have known that when I did X, Y, and Z, I wanted you to do this. No, <laughs> that's, that doesn't work. But honestly, I'm sure I've employed that too, just from watching other people and assuming that that's like how society works. Like if you do this, then other people do that. So along with that, just to be able to, for yourself, if you're autistic, to be able to explain plainly. And also for someone who is not autistic, to be able to explain very clearly what they mean, instead of just assuming that you're just gonna pick up on nuance because that's probably not not gonna happen. So I remember an argument that my husband and I had that still like makes me anxious because I, I felt so blindsided by it and he was upset and rightfully so. And basically he had said, you know, hey, I want us to work on stuff, you know, do work today and work on stuff today. And so at the time I had take home work or like at home work to do. So in my brain, I thought, okay. And I, so I sit down and I start my work on the computer. And I was super blindsided and it confused as to why my husband was so angry at me for doing that. And then he explained to me and said, you know, why are you being a jerk and ignoring what I just said to you? And I'm confused because I'm like, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> and then he explained he meant house chores, the things at the house, like things in the house, cleaning, putting stuff away, that kind of thing is what he meant and he thought that I was just being a jerk and ignoring him by getting on the computer and doing work there. It's just things like that where for some reason my brain said, oh, work, well, yeah, I'll go do work uh, and didn't quite grasp the concept of what work we're talking about. And a sub tip to that, I would try to encourage you to believe the best or uh, give the benefit of the doubt. A lot of times we assume that people are doing things out of malice or they did it intentionally. Like when I went on my computer and did work on there, he thought I was intentionally ignoring what he said and just being a jerk and leaving him to work on the house and stuff like that. But I wasn't, that wasn't my intention. So sometimes we can get even more upset because we think that's someone's intentions. So try to give each other the benefit of the doubt. Tip number two is to give time and space, especially for those on the autistic side. So typically an autistic person isn't going to give you an immediate answer unless if they know 100% what they feel or how they wanna do something, which isn't often unless if it's about something that they're interested in, if that makes sense. So for example, if it was something about their special interest, very likely they're going to have a quick answer for you. But if it's about something difficult or even something you don't think is difficult, 
a lot of times there's this time that's necessary for the processing of emotions and how they feel about it and what they think about it. And even processing things that you might not think we're processing. So for example, if you say something as simple as, uh, what would you rather do? That's scary because for me, I might be thinking what's more convenient for me? What would I really like to do? But is it wrong for me to want to do that because it's more convenient? Uh, did you want to do the other thing? Would it hurt your feelings if we did the other thing? Are you gonna come back at me later and say we always do what you wanna do? Are you, uh, is it more inconvenient for you to do the thing that's more convenient that I actually want to do? Is it going to hurt someone's feelings if I choose what I want to choose? And that's when we even know what we kind of want to do. Sometimes we don't even see that. They, they both seem equally the same to us and we don't really know which one is better. And sometimes we just don't have a preference. <laughs> and then you saying, you know, like, oh, you know, you have to decide or I want to know what you want. And if I say like, I don't know, like I don't really know, I don't see a difference between them you pick or what do you want to do it's frustrating when i get it back you know like oh well you should know what you want or something like that or you know oh i, I don't want to make this decision you have to make it like decisions are not usually an autistic's friend <laughs> probably not many people's friends to be honest but definitely not a thing that i enjoy and uh, so just giving time and space is really helpful though because in those decisions, sometimes we can work through that process of like, which, why is something more beneficial for us or why is something more appealing to us or just sorting out how we feel about something and sometimes we're not really gonna know how we feel about something. Uh, emotions aren't usually very easy for us to decipher, especially within ourselves. So giving that, hey, question and then if there's not an immediate response, don't be like, hey, answer me. Hey, I asked you a question. Hey, what's your answer? Hey, 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 hey. That's not <laughs> gonna help anyone, I promise. I'm sure that doesn't help anyone on the other side either, but usually what's going to happen is when you keep pressing and pressing and pressing and pressing, you're gonna throw the autistic person into a meltdown or a shutdown. And this is also a thing, even if it's not necessarily about a choice or feeling or decisions or whatnot, but even about a change that might be happening, especially a change that I didn't expect to be dealing with, if that makes sense. So if you're familiar with the MBTI personality types, Myers-Briggs thing, um, my husband types as an ISTP. So we're very different and he really likes to do spontaneous things. He likes to kind of, he kind of sets on ideas for a while and then he just wants to be able to like create things with his hands and change things and do that sort of thing. And that's his thing. I don't like that, uh, <laughs> but I admire that he can do that. It's really neat. And so sometimes like, for example, he'll want to change up how the living room works and what I really appreciated was that he was like, hey, I don't want to overwhelm you, but these are some things I wanted to let you know about that we don't have to, you know, make that decision about right now, but I want you to know that it's coming. And sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> I'll be honest because sometimes I put off things I don't want to think about, um, but knowing like what the expectations from me are going to be, and kind of easing into change really helps and then giving that space instead of being like, oh, by the way, I wanna completely change the entire living room. Let's do it right now. That's not going to end well. <laughs> it's just not going to end well. And this also occurs on an intimate level. So what I mean by that is like your intimate thoughts and ideas and things that you hold dear to your heart. Maybe you're having that heart to heart moment with them that you're telling them what you've been struggling through and what you've been dealing with and they're, they haven't been privy to it before or it's something that they're like, even who knows, maybe they, they had an inkling about it or not, but it's probably something they, they didn't realize. When you say all those things, a lot of times people want feedback. So what are your thoughts on that? How do you feel about that? What do you think? And it can be disheartening to not hear something immediately back because a lot of times the autistic person is going to be processing that. Um, many times, um, from my perspective, I've taken things personally. So their struggles mean that I haven't helped them through those struggles or that I created those struggles or somehow it's my fault. And I don't know if that's a thing for everyone. I know that's for me. So sometimes 
it becomes really emotional and overwhelming and it's it, it feels like it's somehow my fault or even that I care so much about them that I don't know how to fix it and I didn't know that they were going through that and I should have known that they were going through that I should have helped them but I don't know how to and so like all these things are are going on in my mind and my emotions and I don't do well with handling my emotions and um, that's probably a pretty broad spectrum thing too and so when they say you know how do you feel about that what do you think I don't know I don't typically don't know how I feel I typically don't know what I'm thinking and a lot of times if you ask for an answer immediately I might be defensive or I might just shut down and a lot of autistics do just shut down and they don't respond and that can be really hurtful for the person who just poured out their heart and soul because they think that the autistic person doesn't care and that's not what's happening the autistic person doesn't know how to process all of the things that you've finally been able to get out if that makes sense so in that I would encourage fellow autistics to try to say something or try to communicate in some way back because it does feel kind of hurtful to kind of talk to a wall if that makes sense to someone who's not going to respond to be able to do something whether that thing is going to be perceived as enough is a conversation for you and your significant other um because I mean I could suggest you say I love you but some people will say you know oh they just said I love you and they didn't, you know, respond to all my stuff, you know. Um, just something to signify that you understand, but please follow up afterwards. I know it can be really easy to uh, walk away from it and never deal with it again because that's how I am. If I can get away from a situation that has a lot of emotions and things that are difficult for me and I don't understand how to handle, I'm going to push that away and pretend it doesn't exist because I don't know how to deal with it but that's not helping the person that I love. So if you can't get the words out immediately, you can try to signify in some way, uh, whether it's by holding their hand for a minute or even whatever. This is something I think is really important for you and your significant other to sit down and talk about. Some way that you can communicate that I hear you, I can't talk right now, I can't get it out right now, but I, I hear you and I love you. Um, and then later, somehow communicating the answer to their questions. Because if you don't do that part, then the communication saying, I'm here, I love you, I heard you, doesn't seem genuine. So whether that's to follow up when you feel ready, because if, if anyone's like me, <laughs> I definitely have been thinking about the things you've said to me. I may be overwhelmed, I may be thinking about it too much, feeling about it too much, but a lot of times, I can get to a point where I've finally figured out kind of what I at least want to say back. Um, I've gotten better at speaking in the moment but not all the time so the times that I can't speak in the moment I'll try to come back when I'm ready and even if that doesn't work like I can't get it out of my mouth what I uh, sometimes can do is write it down so I think that's a very excellent resource for autistics is to learn how to write your feelings and your thoughts down because somehow some way it's just really intimidating and difficult to get it out of your mouth especially not the way that you want it to a lot of times the way I want to say things doesn't come out in my mouth right and I've noticed a lot of my responses are inaccurate so I'm gonna give you a sub tip to tip number two here and that is that People don't always respond the way you think they will or in a way that makes sense. So uh, I'm going to make some generalizations here, but typically you would think that someone going <sighs> is done with the conversation is irritated. But I've experienced times where that sigh is coming up from like this deep place of pain and that sigh comes up and it's weird because it's like, I literally, it was like, it's like the air is being pushed out of my lungs. It's hard to breathe because I feel so sorrowful, but that's not a normal way of communicating that feeling. That seems like, oh, I'm fed up. I don't want to deal with this. You know, oh, you're so annoying. But really what that was, was like, oh, I feel pain. I feel so much pain inside because I know exactly what you're saying because it's something I feared for a long time. So. And in another way, a lot of times when I'm really loud and vocal about something, it's probably not actually that important, but I tend to assign importance almost backwards and my reactions a lot of times are almost backwards. So uh, what I'm trying to say here is that sometimes the signals that especially autistic people give don't always make sense to what's normal. 
and to be able to talk and believe what they're saying is important. So when I said, look, that that's not me sounding irritated, I, I, I acknowledge it sounds like it, but I really, really, you know, I feel deeply about this situation and it's really difficult for me. And for some reason, my body is sighing deeply. I don't even know how this is working. Uh, if I wasn't believed in that moment, that would be really painful because I have no control over my weird reactions to things. So just remember that sometimes people don't react in the way that makes sense. And it doesn't mean that they're sending you these signals that they don't like you or they don't love you or anything like that. Autistics tend to be pretty good at saying what they mean if you ask them bluntly. Typically. Not everyone, but most of the time. So I'm just going to move on to tip number three, and that is to recognize that people need different things, or people have different needs, and that is for both sides. That is for both neurotypicals and people who are on the spectrum. And the reason I think this is important to acknowledge is that a lot of times, if you know that the person you're in a relationship with is autistic, you're going to be working with sensory problems, you're going to be working with meltdowns and shutdowns and things that they can and cannot handle, and those types of needs are different from yours. But to the fellow autistic person, recognize also that your partner has different needs than you do. So, for example, I could probably go weeks and just be involved in my project, be involved in my videos, be involved in my editing, and my whole world is wrapped up in those things. And I could be fine with just saying hi and bye, and maybe, you know, oh, I love you to my husband, but he needs more than that. He needs me to pay more attention to him. He needs me to show in some way that I still love him and acknowledge that he exists. <laughs> so I often don't comprehend that need. And a lot of times I do have that need. I just don't recognize that need, if that makes sense. So it might be the end if I was allowed to just, you know, go on, if I let myself get wrapped up by my projects for a month or whatnot, I might end that month and realize like I feel lonely and unloved and like, you know, disconnected. And it took me until those feelings were overwhelming to acknowledge that they existed or to recognize that they existed. And that's just, that's just a thing with autism that happens. So, uh, to, in effect, we do have similar needs. It's just that we recognize them later, I guess, maybe. But it's helpful to try to remember that the neurotypical is gonna need to do things that you don't necessarily need to, that don't come naturally to you, just as you have things that you need that don't come naturally to them. So that might even be, you know, going on a spontaneous trip. They might really want to do that. That might not be interesting at all. One of those things my husband really wants to do is to try new foods. I don't like trying new foods. That does not sound remotely interesting, but that's interesting to him. So to understand that uh, there's just so many different things that we, sometimes need to just be able to tolerate. Some days it's gonna be too much and just, no, it's not happening, I can't do it, you can go do it, but I can't do this right now. But for the days that you can handle it, let them have a moment where their needs are met too. So I think that's just really important to talk to both sides of the situation because sometimes we can be a little bit lopsided when we have someone who's technically special needs and we forget that there are still needs that need to be met for the neurotypical side. Sorry if this was a long video. Uh, I didn't intend it to be this long, but here we are. I hope that you enjoyed those tips and found them useful. If you have any tips for others in NTASD uh, relationships, go ahead and comment below and also what you think about these tips. Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I do my best <laughs> to upload every Thursday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. I know for a fact this particular video is not meeting that standard and I apologize. And something I want to tell you real quick before you click off is that I am working on the Autism Speaks video and I did not anticipate quite how much information I would be going through. So I'm still in the research stage, but the way I'm looking at it right now is I'm probably gonna put together a timeline of things and events that went on and uh, reasons for the way people feel about things and stuff like that. I want to approach it as objectively as possible. Obviously I am autistic, so I'm going to have an opinion, but I do want to look into 
some of the claims that people uh, make and make sure that they are actually founded instead of just kind of more, you know, burn autism speaks to the ground kind of thing. Um, anyway, I just want to approach it kind of like that. Um, I want it to be a good video, but I'm, I'm not Shane Dawson. So <laughs> I don't want to like overhype it and it not be, you know, what you guys wanted. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to try to do a timeline. And then there are some things that I think would be worth looking into in individual pieces that I'll probably just make uh, supplement videos to some other time. So anyway, I'm really trying to get that out by the end of this month. I'm not making any promises because I am still in the research stage. I hope that you'll be looking forward to it anyway. And uh, yeah, see me in my next video. And I hope you've had a wonderful week. Bye!